Greetings from foggy San Francisco, Roberto Bruno, pastor of the Central Church here. I'm just sending a, a greetings and a good Friday to you. Um, I pray that uh, you have seen uh, and the workings of, of God throughout this week in our everyday lives, right? Because isn't that the amazing thing about the Lord? He doesn't just work in a big uh, conference service. He he actually is is constantly working on the day to day. And and uh, what I comfort myself is is God is on the throne and prayer changes things. And so, if we continually seek His face, we can continually live in a state of hope. Right. I mean, with hope, we could always be looking towards the future, uh, trusting God, believing Him, you know, hoping that <clears throat> our prayers will be answered, doors will be opened, circumstances will be changed. I mean, hope is, 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 is everything uh, to me um, in many ways as, as we just live our lives day to day and, you know, and, and fight the fight, right? The good fight is as the Apostle Paul says. And, and the beautiful thing is, is though we feel like we're living our everyday life and trusting God, you know, the people around us, our coworkers, our friends, our families, the world, so to speak, you know, see something in us. So as we live and even ourselves, we, we're constantly reaching for hope and trusting and believing in God. People see that. And, and, sometimes not even realizing we're we're giving hope to to people uh, i just want you to be encouraged no one said that life was going to be easy no one says that 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 the struggle is not real you know it, it it really is but but because of that hope we we can give hope because we're we're we can testify of the goodness and greatness of god we can look back, and though we don't look back in the past, we do look back in those moments where God came through, where God spoke, where God changed things. And we can apply those things to today now. So even though I may not see the end of the tunnel, uh, you know, concerning my struggles or, or waiting for that door to open in my life, I could say, hey, listen, God has done this before. He, he is surely going, go, going to do it again. You know, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, you know, the book of Hebrews just lists all these, these people that had struggles of the Old Testament, that had struggles, but believed God so sincerely that they, that they, you know, just lived their lives believing that they would have, uh, uh, see the promise that God had given them. And Hebrews tells us that, that, um, you know, uh, um, a lot of terrible things happened. Some were burned, some were sawn in half, some uh, 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 lost children. The, it, it lists like all these tragedies. But then in verse 38, it, it, it says this, 38 through 40, it says, of whom the world was not worthy. And that, that passage always, that little portion of passage always has really stuck out to me because because when you look at it, uh, look at the people of the Old Testament, you know, they were shepherds, they were just regular people, they, they uh, um, you know, were widows, they, they, they were just regular people that, that to maybe the authorities thought were disposable. But here, literally, the writer of Hebrews says, the world was not worthy of them. And look at what it says. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and holes and in the grounds. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Now, we can see that as discouraging. We can see that as positive. The thing is, is they just lived their lives full throttle, wide open, out loud, you know, striving for this promise. And, and maybe they didn't see it happen in their lifetime but it came to other lifetimes, but that's not the point. Verse 40 says this, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. What does that mean? It means that even though they didn't see what they wanted to see, God provided something better for them. And it wasn't just for these heroes of the faith, right? These heroes that we look up to it in the Old Testament, Moses and, and Deborah 
and Rebecca and and all and, and, and David and we it, it's it's not that we're apart even ourselves are a part of this better thing that God has for us now in our studies in uh, this month in in the book of first Peter you know we we've heard in the studies in the last couple of weeks that you know, we're this chosen generation. We're this royal priesthood. We're this holy nation. We're his own special people that what that we both proclaim the praises of who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're these people. Now, some would say we're arrogant that the world isn't worthy of us, right? Or the world dismisses us, yeah? Because hey, we're you know we're this or that. We're the garbage man. We're we're the police officer. We we you know we're these chefs. We're we're, we're these uh, uh, um, um, stay-at-home moms. We're 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 school teachers. We're we're all these things. We're like who are these people? Who are these people? We're these people full of hope. We're these people that are full of power. We're these people that are this chosen generation. That we're his own people. We're not better, but we have something better. What? That we could speak into this dark world. That we have this hope. We could be so consumed with our problems, with our past, with our victimizations, with our no good husband, whatever it may be. We could, and I'm not minimizing our problems. I've got enough of them here. But we have hope. And in that hope, we have strength. In that hope, we have momentum. In that hope, we have encouragement. In that hope, we always hope for tomorrow. We could hope for the next hour. We could hope for t the next day. We could hope for the next month. We have hope. Why? Because we serve this faithful God, a loyal God, a trusting God. That even though these folks of the Old Testament never saw their promise, right? They never saw it. Why? Because God had something better for them. Better. Better. Now, I may be hoping for a, a, a something else. I, I may be, be, be hoping for a, a, a new car. I may be hoping for a better job. I may be hoping for a, a lot of things that I say, if I have this new job, it will be better. If I get this new car, I don't have to go to the mechanic as often as I, as I do with my, my, my hoopty. Uh, I could, right? But, but I may not even conceive what God has that is better than me better for me. I'm not talking about necessarily material things. I'm just talking about what God has for us. I want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. We have hope. We have hope. And though maybe we might be surrounded by a lot of people that don't know God and they're desperate and they're scared and, and they're saying all kinds of things that that, that seem negative and this, this is a terrible world and we're going to die of this thing and oh my God, the vaccine isn't enough or the vaccine is a, the mark of the beast or any, I, that's fine. People could believe and feel the way they want to believe. I'm just saying that we have hope and even if maybe things don't turn out the way we want them to, according to Hebrews, it will be better, better, better things better, better things, better than what we have, better than where we're going, better, better, better things. Be encouraged. Be encouraged th that, that our God is a good God. Be encouraged that God hears our prayers. God knows exactly where we're at. He knows our address. He knows our address. It's not a matter of, 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 of if, it's a matter of when. When God is going to speak. When is God going to move? When is God going, going to touch? Because we're his children. We're his children. We should hold our heads high. Not because we're proud. We hold our heads high because we have hope. And we have strength in, in him. And even at the weakest point, we have strength because of God. I pray that, that you feel encouraged. 
I, I pray that that you continue to press on, just as the Apostle Paul says, I fought the good fight. I, I, I pressed I pressed on towards the mark, you know, the mark of it. It's a journey. It's not a destination. We know this. And as we travel through and grow and understand God more and more, more and more, we become stronger and stronger and a brighter and brighter beacon for this dark world that we live in. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Attend church. If you're from Central Church, 10 a.m., our services start there in-house. Every week is different. God moves every time because we're hungry for him. We seek him. We almost demand it from him. And of course, he obliges us because why wouldn't he want to touch his people in the praises, in the worship, and in his word? Uh, we're live on our Facebook page. We're there live also on our YouTube channel. Um, come out and, and join us. If not, attend your own church so that you could be encouraged. God, God bless you and, 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 and uh, stay hopeful.